Okay, here we're going to be looking at accounting for call or put options as hedging investments. And it'll be based on the intrinsic value or the fair value of the option. And we're going to be looking at it in terms of a call option, where we buy this option and then we can purchase a fixed number of shares of stock at a set price at a certain date. Now, this option here, or its market value of the option here, is going to be based on the intrinsic value of the option plus the time value of the option. Now, this intrinsic value of the option, that's the amount of the option or the portion of the option that is not lost due to a passage of time, whereas the time value of the option here, that's the portion of the option that is lost due to a passage of time. And I'll be going over how to calculate this intrinsic value and the time value of the option, and then we'll go over and, and look at how to record this option on the balance sheet and on the income statement. Okay, before we start our example, the accounting treatment for options depends on whether the option was purchased as a hedge against price fluctuations or for speculation on trading the option. I'll be going over the option here as a hedge against prices. Also, the example for calculating the intrinsic values and the time values are based on commodity prices, but it would be the same for purchasing a financial instrument like uh, stocks. So let's first go over how to calculate the intrinsic value and the time value of these options. Okay, here we're going to determine the intrinsic value of the option. This is where we compare the market price to the strike price, or the price that we can purchase this commodity at. So looking at our first period here where the market price is 125 versus a strike price here of $125. So the difference here is zero. So that's the intrinsic value of this option. Looking at the next period where the market price is 127.50 versus again the strike price of 125. So the uh, difference here is $2.25. So the difference between the periods here was from 0 to 225. So we had an increase here of 225. Looking at our next period here where we had a market price of 125.50 versus the strike price, uh, the difference here is 50 cents. So the change between periods here was a negative $1.75. The 225 versus the uh, subtracting this 50 cents here. And looking at our next period here where the market price is 124.25 versus the strike price here of $125. So this is where we record zero for an intrinsic value because you can buy um, the commodity here at a lesser price than the strike price. And you can never have a negative amount here um, for your intrinsic value. Then looking at it, and then the difference between periods here would be the 50 cents versus the zero here. So we had a reduction here of 50 cents. Then looking at our last period here where the market price is 130.75 versus the commodity price here of 125. So we had a difference here of $5.75. So the change between periods here was from zero to 575. So we had a change here of $5.75. Okay, to determine the time value of the option. First, we have to determine the change for each period for the market value of the option, and then the change for each period for the intrinsic value of the option. And then we subtract the change for the intrinsic value from the change from the market value, and that gives you the change here in our time value. So looking at our first case here, where we had a 50 cent change here in our market value, and you subtract a $2.25 change here in the intrinsic value, and then you get a negative $1.75 here in your time value. So if we started out with a time value of $9.25 for the option, you subtract a $1.75, and your new time value here would be $7.50. And then uh, you would just continue on subtracting the change here in the intrinsic value from the change here in your market value. So remember here you have to do a little bit of arithmetic. So looking at this period here we had a negative change here of $3.75 here in our market value and then you subtract out the negative change here of $1.75 for the intrinsic value and then your change here would be a negative $2. So uh, to determine our time value here we'd subtract the minus two dollars here from the beginning amount here of seven dollars and fifty cents and we'd come up with that five dollars and fifty cents so you just can continue on using that uh, subtracting this intrinsic value change from the market value change and then 
if we look at our uh, time value option here, we started out with $9.25 and then uh, at the expiration date here, uh, the time value was zero or it had no time value here. Okay, this is how we record this option on our balance sheet and our income statement. And the entries here are based on the changes that we calculated for each period. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up this call option account here as a tem temporary investment and that would be an asset here on our balance sheet. So we'd be debiting it or increasing it here for the price that we paid for that option and then we'd credit or reduce our cash account for that price that we paid here. And then to record here our option for the market price changes that we be included here in this call option account. So any positive changes here in the market price would be debited to the call option account or increase this call option account and any negative changes here would be credited or reducing here this call option account. And then to uh, record here our change in option due to the intrinsic value that's where we'd be recording it here in the other comprehensive income or the equity section here of our balance sheet and that would be recorded here as an unrealized gain or loss. So any positive changes here in the intrinsic value would be crediting this other comprehensive income account and any negative changes here we'd be debiting or reducing here our other comprehensive income account. And then to record our uh, change here in option due to the time value. This is where we'd be recognized our uh, gain or loss here on our income statement. And in this case, we had all negative changes. So we would be debiting the uh, uh, gain or loss account here. That means we would actually be recognizing a loss here on our income statement. Okay, let's summarize our call option. It includes a portion here that's an unrealized gain or loss and then a portion here that would be a realized loss. So looking at the end of the first period here, we had a credit of $2.25 here or an increase here in our unrealized gain or loss and then we had our, our realized portion here of $1.75. So the net gain or loss in this case would be the $2.25 plus the negative amount here of $1.75. So we'd had a net gain here of $0.50. Cents. Now that balances here with our call option uh, uh, market price change here of $0.50. Cents. So looking at the end of the third period, this is where we had a reduction here in our unrealized gain and loss of 50 cents and then we also had a recognized loss here of two dollars and fifty cents. So the net gain and loss in this case was the fifty cents here plus the two dollars and fifty cents so we had a three dollar here net loss in this case. And that balances here with our uh, change here in the option market price of three dollars or a credit amount here to the call option account here of three dollars. Okay, so we can match here our debits and credits or our changes here between our call option account and our other comprehensive equity account here or the unrealized gain or loss and that will balance with any gain or loss here recognized on that call option. So in summary here we can look at our call option formula and that would be the change here between the option price minus the change between the intrinsic value of that option and that would equal here the change in the time value of the option.